Hello, my dear audience. Today we're going to travel to Flint Ridge, California, to visit a house that's located in a suburban area. It's one of the smaller and lesser known homes by John Lawner, and one of his earliest designs. When you drive by, it's hard to even notice his house, because it's located below street level. After you descend over the driveway, you see a wooden home that doesn't look any special. But when you take a closer look, you will notice that it is full of interesting details. The house is built on a flat piece of ground, while the road goes over the hill. There is a small pathway that is placed in a narrow space between the house and a higher hill. Over this pathway you can walk to the garden, but we go through the front door. From here you step directly in the living room, where you see an unusual construction at the ceiling. It's the roof supporting system that makes this house unlike any other house. Before we go any further, we first gonna take a look at how this roof was made. The construction started with concrete foundations and steel pillars that were placed in the ground. These pillars are standing slightly diagonal. A total of 14 pillars, 7 on each side of the house, were placed. These pillars support 7 oval steel trusses that are placed in the width of the house. After placing the construction, the steel parts of the trusses were covered with wooden trims for lateral support. To make it even stronger, a trellis of five wooden beams was placed over the length to connect the trusses with each other. This trellis prevents the trusses and pillars from bending and is connected with wood notches at the lower horizontal trims. The trellis is visible in the interior going through the middle from the rear to the front of the house. The next step was to place the roof beams on the trusses. These beams are placed over the length and follow the oval shape of the trusses, giving the house a curving roof. Because there is no lowered ceiling, all the roof beams are visible from inside. After this, the roof was completed by placing roof plates over the wooden beams. The house has similarities with two other designs by John Lautner that were constructed around the same time, the Solking and Mauer House. Both houses have a unique and distinctive roof construction that forms the main design element and is part of the interior. In the three cases, the construction derives the walls from having any supporting function, allowing windows from floor to ceiling. No internal walls are needed to support the roof so you can have large open spaces underneath. John Lautner never designed the same house twice, so each of the three houses has a different roof supporting system. Another similarity is the casted concrete floor that all three houses share. This floor is casted over the entire surface of the house and is made of ochre colored concrete. Because of the thickness of the concrete, the floor level is elevated above the ground level. The last similarity is that all the designs were low budget projects in which prefabricated columns were placed on a location. And once the roof and floor was finished, the houses were completed by the owners themselves. Now we're gonna take a look at the floor plan. The house has a pretty straightforward layout. The kitchen, dining and living area are placed in one space. I decorated the drawing with furniture to give an indication of the size and dimensions. We continue to walk through the house. The large living room has windows made of frameless glass, which makes it transparent, spatial and filled with lots of sunlight. The ceiling gives the living space somewhat of an industrial style, which makes the house still feeling very contemporary after almost 80 years. The sitting area has a private feeling because it is partly enclosed by half-height wooden walls on one side and the fireplace and chimney on the other side. The fireplace is the only part made of bricks in the house. Because the kitchen is open with a bar, the living room feels even more spatial. 
Directly next to it is the dining table. Behind it is a glass door that swings open towards the terrace. At the left side of the house, the roof extends beyond the walls of the interior. And it rests on the last pair of steel pillars, forming a porch over the terrace. Because the roof plates are only partly placed, enough sunlight can enter the terrace, like a pergola. An already existing tree continues to grow through the open space between the beams. The nature that is not disrupted by the house is an important trademark of organic architecture. From the terrace you can descend over a minor hillside towards the garden with a swimming pool. But we go back in the living room one more time to look at the windows that are diagonally placed to follow the direction of the pillars. The windows have sliding doors, but there's also a small glass door. And because of the diagonal pillars, this door is trapeze shaped. From this door, you can walk over a concrete ridge. And from there, you have to descend a few steps to enter the garden. This ridge is formed because the concrete floor has the same dimensions as the roof. By placing the external walls more towards the middle of the roof, the three lost steel pillars become externally. In front of the sleeping area, the roof construction is not covered with roof plates. This was done to allow enough sunlight in the bedrooms. These windows are medium sized for privacy reasons and because the windows are only half sized, they need all the sunlight from above. Through the corridor we go to the master bedroom. This bedroom has its own bathroom and walk-in closet. In this bathroom one of the steel pillars is placed in front of the bathtub. The faucet can be switched on by a hole in a glass shower screen. A small back door with a stair gives direct access to the garden. A curving wall at the backside creates privacy in the master bedroom and at the garden. A funny side note for me is that this house originally was commissioned by a Dutch person who had emigrated to the United States. His name pronounced correctly in Dutch is Gantvoort. But that is very hard to pronounce when you don't speak the language. The final part of the house is a carport which was attached later to the main house and is not part of the roof construction. This carport was made of steel beams that rest on the curving wall of the bedroom on one side and on a tool shed on the other side. The Gantvoort residence belongs to the category of more economic houses that John Lautner designed at the start of his career and it's a far cry from the spectacular millionaire homes that he designed later. That's just what makes this house so interesting. It proves that John Lautner was also very good in designing small houses with a limited budget. This was your tour guidance. Thank you for watching and till next time.